Here we are in the China Sea, Mandora, the Philippines. When people think of Mandora, they think of the big catch, catching big fish. But when I think of Mandora, I think of fishing for Jesus. Jesus said, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. Here we are in Mandora where today, this Sabbath, we're praying for a thousand baptisms where 31 preacher's kids and worker's kids have been preaching all across this island and we're praying that a thousand will be baptized today. Thank you, Quiet Art. Thank you, Southwestern Union, for sending your preacher's kids here to Mendora to fulfill the great commission of Jesus, to go into all the world and preach and teach and baptize. The Bible tells us which day is the seventh day. I'll give you will end conflict between good and evil. sanctified it, blessed it, and set it apart, made it holy. So they reject God's law. The choice is completely up to you. Does that mean becoming part of Christ's church? We are called, we are chosen, we're commanded to go. your heart hear the call you're the one will you go share him share him there's a story I pray and I said, Lord, I won't ask you for a number this time. Do you send how many you want to send? I am doing my job. Uh, let the Holy Spirit do His job. So, uh, by the time I got up to the platform, I had probably like 70 people and 30 kids in the church, and I was like so glad. And then at the end, I, sh I tried shaking everybody's hand, and then they said, really good. Uh, it touched our heart, so I'm really happy. We're in a big tent. We don't really have a building. And there wasn't a lot of people, and so I prayed for 20, and God gave me 26. Amen. And so then I prayed for 20 more, and God gave me 48. Amen. And so like, he keeps exceeding what I ask him. Somebody came in and stole part of the sound system. My church had given me and my sister an offering to give to our churches. Because they said, you're doing something good, we want to do, we want to, you know, tag along and give something good to, you know, that people are going to them. So I was like, you know, like, really, you know, like, great and stuff like that. Well, I was supposed to give it last Saturday. But, you know, something, you know, like, it's just like, you know what, I'll just hold on to it till this coming Saturday. And so when I heard that, and something just automatically told me, saying, and then when I explained it to them, when I told them, you know, that, you know, my church gave them an offer and stuff like that, I was like, you know, God knew ahead of time what was going to happen. That he knew that, that you know, there's bad people out there that they want to do harm, that, that God was going to provide for you. And then I told him, I was like, that apparently I say this, but then I thought, I was like, I don't. It must be just the Holy Spirit telling me. And I was like, they can take all they want because in the end, God is going to give it back to them and ten times better than what they already had because God does not abandon his children. Amen. And they're all like, amen, and they're like all happy and stuff like that. So I have seen the Holy Spirit working with the, with my church. They drove me on a motorcycle all the way down to this basketball court about two kilometers away. And uh, at the basketball court, the first night I was there, it was completely packed. There was, like, every seat was taken, and then there were stands behind it, a little further back out. And those were completely taken. And I don't know if they were all members, but I think most of them were just visitors. And uh, the first night, I studied, and I thought I did pretty well as a whole, and as how I taught it. So I think I did pretty well, I'm not sure. but um, And then the second night I came, same place, same time. It was half, half people were gone, and um, I looked at it, and I wondered. Um, I asked my translator, "Hey, did I do okay?" And she said, "Yeah, I think you did okay." And, uh, you know, 
I just kept preaching night after night, people started diminishing, and after a while there was nobody left. Oh, there was people left, but there was like mostly little kids that talked during the whole sermon, and then there was like four adults in the back, and they were members. And, uh, you know, uh, that was the first week, and they literally said to me, yeah, we're not going to preach here anymore because there's not enough people. Because they took me to that side because they thought there would be more people, but there weren't, so they took me back to the church. And uh, my first night at the church, I spoke about, um, I think it was some sermon, and like I said before, the church was not filled whatsoever. And um, that was when I was trying to do it on my own. And the more I tried harder and didn't ask God for help, the more the people just left. And then one night, it came to a point where I was just, I was, you know, sad. Because, I mean, this happened to me twice. In Costa Rica, I had literally <laughs> four people, and they were all members coming every night. And um, I tried my hardest. I practiced every day, and nothing happened. And this is my second time. It was happening all over again. I thought I was going to make a difference, but I didn't. And the reason why was because I didn't ask God for help, and I wasn't, I guess, connected. And there was one night where it was a sermon about denominations. Let me tell you this, it was a long sermon, long sermon, and a lot of history. And I knew in my heart I cannot preach that sermon without being boring. Like People would just fall asleep. I knew in my heart. And so I went into the pastor's room, I turned on all the lights, and I just prayed to God. And I asked him, let me be interesting use me in any way you want and when I did that I preached a sermon and I, I think I felt God in, in my heart because the things I was saying were not me and it was just completely God and that day the church was packed and from that day forth every time I asked God the church was packed and um, I asked for an altar call one person came forward and on baptism day there were six people were baptized so I was just like praying the whole day and I went to go uh, lay down in another room that had a lot of AC and stuff and I was feeling really bad. But I was I kept praying to God while they were having the worship in the morning because I couldn't make it because I was sick. And so I kept praying that he would give me the strength to preach tonight. And the projector wouldn't turn on and I didn't know why. And I we like unplugged it and plugged it back in and like the electricity was fine and we, I just didn't know what it was. And I remembered something that you had said about a slide, if it, if it was blinking, because it was blinking, and he said something about a slide, but I wasn't really paying attention, so I didn't know. And so I, there, you know the little slide thing in front of the projector, I'm just like, well maybe that's what he was talking about. I'm like, no, that po couldn't possibly be it, like, that's not what it is. And I, and I prayed, I'm just like, God, please let the projector turn on, I don't want to like, not have it work. And the, they were giving a health lecture while I was praying and everything, so the projector wasn't working while it was going on. So I prayed, and um, I remember the story that Gary had told this morning about the snake on the pole and how he was like, some people were just like, oh no, that can't possibly work. And I'm just like, but it actually did work. So I slipped the thing back and forward and it turned on. And I'm just like, well, thank you, God. Thank you for realizing, for making me realize the irony in that situation. It worked. It was such a blessing because last night we thought we were only going to have 18. But my translator and I prayed very hard last night. And this morning we had six more. So in total we had 24 people accept God into their lives. I was feeling very disappointed because my church wasn't doing that great with the whole call and with all the decision cards. So in total I got two decision cards back and only one person in my church wanted to be baptized. So I was feeling super discouraged. So I was sitting on, looking out on the beach and I prayed to God, I was like, Dear God, if you are re really with me, can you send a little butterfly just to come and land somewhere close so I can know you're with me? And I didn't see a butterfly for the rest of the whole day. And I was just, I was like dead the whole, the whole time because it, I felt like God wasn't with me. So then on Friday, I was preaching and I started the sermon I wasn't feeling very confident about it because that night was the call. So I was just preaching and then about a quarter or halfway through the sermon, a huge black butterfly just comes up and lands on top of my computer and it just stays there for a good five minutes. I was preaching and I wasn't looking on the laptop at that moment. So I was preaching to my crowd and I just looked and I saw the, la and I saw the butterfly on my laptop and I started freaking out. Like I was just like, whoa. There's a butterfly. That's like an answered prayer right there. That's amazing. It was great. 
it was there were more visitors more visitors than people than like the people from the church church members and there were young adults and teenagers and kids and it was great it was awesome my congregation told me afterwards that they saw the excitement on my face and how I preached better after that and I did a call that night and there were 16 people in my church that were baptized last yesterday and there were so many people just coming up just to pray with everybody that was being baptized and I think Friday night was the best night that I had here. I want to try not to cry but I did not want to come on this trip at all. I hate speaking in front of people. I get really nervous and it makes me uncomfortable um, but I still came and um, it started on Friday night. Um, I have the people recite if it's in the Bible to me. And I asked for someone to come forward and, and recite it. And a little boy came up, he was about 10 years old, and he said it. And I told the audience, next time I want an adult to come up. And I pointed at a guy and I said, you're going to come up tomorrow. And he was all like, oh, OK, whatever. And then um, Sabbath morning, he was at church. And I reminded him that he was going to come and say it on the, the nightly meeting. And so. Um, it was the meeting on, on last night, and the sermon went really well, and I did the call. And um, we did the passing out the decision cards, and the singer, the singer, I have a group of singers at my church, and she sang a song, and the song was saying, um, make a decision for Christ now because you don't know what tomorrow will hold. And when the translator was telling me the lyrics, I started crying because I realized how important that song was for some of the people out there. And when I got up to um, do the closing prayer, I asked for those who had um, checked the box to be baptized to come forward. And he came forward. And it made me realize that if I had not come on this trip, he might not have had the decision to follow Christ. Share the hope, share the truth.